Hey guys, EVP Man here. Now in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at a 3D printer that it's gonna allow you to experience or live out your cosplay fantasies when it comes to large prints. We're talking about the brand new Saint Smart Infi 20. Now this is a brand new 3D belt printer that's gonna allow you to print stuff like this. Check this out. So this is a sword that we just printed off of this printer. And yeah, this is one piece and it keeps on going and going and going. We're gonna talk about how you can print products like this. This one isn't fully glued yet because I just wanted to show you how uh, we printed it and then how you'd put it together. But this is a fantastic printer for those of you who are looking uh, to have large prints just like this, or if you're looking to have, I would say, repetitive printing where you're gonna do mass production. And let's face it, uh, you see a lot of these guys being printed. Imagine being able to print something like this nonstop where they're just kicking out of this printer. Well, this printer really is about mass production and large long prints. So let's go ahead and check it out. Now, before we actually get a closer look at the printer and take a look at these prints, I wanna share with you some of the specs. And also, I've been using this printer for several weeks now. I actually had one of the very first versions that hit stateside and started doing some testing. And there's a really a lot to like about this printer. And there's also some differences from some of the other 3D belt printers that are on the market. One of the big ones for me is the fact that this thing comes fully assembled. And if you've ever had to put a printer together and, and just get things to align, I have to tell you that this is a massive time saver. And it's something that I really appreciate as a consumer who's um, going to be receiving this product because you want to be able to open that box and start using that printer so it comes fully assembled. Now, this is using stable core um, XY structure. It has a 200 by 120 to infinity, right? So the actual belt surface itself is has a reasonably large size and it's called infinity because it never ends. So unlike a standard printer where you may have a square that you work in or a circle that you work in, this one, the belt keeps on moving and it keeps on putting out prints. So there's no end to it. From a layer height, you're looking at anywhere from a 0.1 to a 9.4 millimeter and you're gonna be able to print PLA and PTG. Now, this does support a couple of slicers. And again, I had one of the very early versions, so I just received the latest slicer update and profile, uh, and it does have a Saint Smart uh, Cura version of the slicer. But rest assured that if you wanna use your own Cura version or you wanna use Idea Maker, and this is the really uh, thoughtful thing I think that Saint Smart did, is that you do have a uh, Cura profile and an idea maker profile. And I actually use both. So being able to switch between those or have those profiles ready for you when you get this printer is a big win in my mind. Now, the extruder, the max temperature on the extruder that you're gonna be able to get is 240C. Now, the bed also is 100C. Now, from a speed perspective, this is not gonna be the fastest printer that you have because it's more about mass production and also you want to keep it because of how it's printing make sure that you have great quality so you're going to be looking at 30 to 60 mm when it comes to this printer uh, printing now here's one other thing uh, this thing comes factory leveled and i want that to sink in for a second it comes factory leveled now i received a a early version of this and when i received it while it did go through the factory leveling and it was tested, um, during shipping, I had to do some adjustments. But I will say this, the amount of time it took me from plugging it in to getting it leveled and getting it to go was super fast. This is one of the fastest belt printers that I reviewed that I was able to print and go. And one of the reasons for this is because beyond being factory leveled, right, if you get it where it just works out of the box, it also has an onboard leveling test. So you don't have to slice anything. You're able to, as soon as you open this up and you load the filament, you hit a button and you'll be able to see if this thing is leveled. And you're gonna see that leveling test um, when we take a closer look at the printer. Now, this also supports some really cool things like uh, remote printing. It actually has the ability for you to do polymer, ESP3D or um, Octo Remote built in so that if you have that and you wanna be able to do some remote uh, printing and monitoring, you'll be able to do that as well. You have also power recovery and also filament runout and break, uh, I would say, detection. Now, the last thing I just wanted to highlight, and this is also, I think, for this bundle is a great deal, is that it also includes the extension roller. So the extension roller, the printer, all in one solid package. And that is really gonna put you in a position where if you wanna do mass prints like this, right? 
or any kind of mass production, repetitive production, you'll be able to do that simply and easily. So let's take a look at the printer and then what we'll do is we'll take a look at our prints. Now the NC20 has a really nice and very easy to use menu system. I have to say that as this was designed, there's a lot of thought put into just some of the common things that you and I would run into when we're running this printer. So for example, uh, when you run a print, this one just ran for 11 seconds, you have the ability to run the same one again. Who would have thought of that? You don't have to go through and select it. You do have a dial type system when it comes to accessing um, the menu. So I'm gonna press home here. And then you have the ability to go and choose print. You could go ahead and choose prepare. And in the prepare area, you can do that preheat or as I said, the onboard layer test, which we uh, will run in a second. You also have the ability to change the filament and then you have the ability to exit. All you do is press tap here uh, just to get out. You can go into the move menu and in the move menu is where you're gonna go ahead and make any adjustments that you have to do to any of the access uh, points, uh, the extruder, or going home. I'll hit back. Um, you can go into the about, and this is gonna tell you about the operating system um, and things of that nature. We'll go here into the print area, and in the print area, all you're gonna do is choose your actual prints uh, that you'd like to print and execute from there. Now the MV20, just like many 3D belt printers, has a similar design. You have your filament spool holder on the side, and actually this is one of the few things that you have to I would say um, connect or build, if anything. All it is is it doesn't come attached, you just have to attach it on the side. You do have your filament loader uh, coming up through here, your filament sensor, um, and again, this is where your filament's going through your Bowden tube, and then all the way over here, you can see the print head um, up in front. Uh, the belt itself continues to rotate, as you'll see in a couple seconds, uh, and it's a real compact design. When we compare this to the CR30, you're gonna see how much smaller it is from a footprint, but when we measure the actual print service, you have something that is very similar. The print service itself um, of these two printers are pretty much very close to each other. Now in the front of the printer, what you'll notice is that this is your belt area and this is actually your print surface. And you're seeing based on the actual, again, layer test itself, what your area is to print. Uh, so you have this entire area that you can work from, which is really nice. Now uh, on the, each one of these sides, you'll notice that there's some screws. This is where you would attach your actual uh, rollers that you're gonna see in a couple seconds. And that what that's gonna do is that's gonna extend it forward this way so that if you have some large prints. Now, if you don't have long prints and you have some smaller prints that all you expect to do is have those prints uh, come off the belt. As the belt is rotating, you can see how it's moving forward as it's doing a layer test. The, this area right here will actually force the prints to just pop off. And if you have, let's say, like a little uh, bin or something that's gonna catch them, you'll be able to catch them um, as they come off um, into that container. And one of the cool things about the Infi 20 is the fact that it has an onboard layer test. And you can see it right now running here in the background. Uh, all you literally have to do is navigate on the, in the menu and it's actually embedded inside of the actual operating system or software itself. So there's no SD to insert. You can literally, as soon as you get your printer, you put on your filament spool, uh, you power it up and you're able to run your layer test. And as you can see here, how the layer test is running. Now, as you are working on leveling this printer, it's very different from traditional printers where it has the knobs on the bottom. The actual leveling knobs in this printer are actually found in, on the sides. So what you'll do is if you had a layer test and that layer test, let's say for example, did not stick like these are. So these are sticking nicely. And as I rub my fingers on them, you notice that they're fine. This debris here is from the previous prints. So that wasn't part of, of this, layer test, it was just there from the previous print. But you notice everything is sticking really nice uh, on each side. But if I wasn't having that, what I would do is I would adjust this. I would either uh, increase, raise it, or lower it as I am seeing the layer test to make sure that I'm having um, some good consistency when it comes to adhesion. Uh, pretty much when it comes to these two tests that you can see here, everything is spot on. But like I said, this printer comes pre-leveled and requires very little adjustment. Right. Uh, when I was working on my CR30 when I first got it, it took me quite a while before I could get any good prints coming out. Now on the front of the printer, you'll find your voltage regulator or your switch. Uh, depending on what part of the country you're in, you may go with a 230 or you may go 115. Cool thing about this is that it's not in the back, it's not somewhere hidden, it's not underneath. Uh, you can check it really quickly once you receive it, adjust it for your country. And then once you set it, you don't have to worry about tripping it by mistake because it's recessed. Now on the front left side of the printer, you're gonna be able to find your power button as well as your power cord. Now this printer runs relatively quiet and as we bring the sound meter here just for a second, you'll be able to see what kind of sound we're getting or white noise. 
So you saw around 48 dB. This is actually quieter. I have a printer running on the left and to the right of it. So there's some additional noise coming in, but it's super duper quiet, which means, you know, depending if you have limited space and this is one of the, or the only printer that you have, you don't have to worry about it making a lot of noise. Now, as we compare the Infi 20 to the actual Creality CR30 that you see here, you'll notice that the actual footprint of the printers is very different. You have one that is much more compact, takes up a lot less space, which means that if you have limited space and you need to have multiple of these, this is going to go really well. Now, this one does have some, some uh, a wider front, and you can see that there's a lot of space here compared to the space that you have right here that I would say is somewhat wasted, right? Because um, it's not necessary. Uh, you can taper that down to be able to make it a little bit more compact. And that's what I think Saint Smart did with this model here. But for the most part, as you look at each one of these side by side, very similar design when it comes to the uh, belt printer itself, where the spools are located, um, where the filament loaders are, and then also the placement of the print heads. The one thing though that is different, and I would say is kind of my preference at this time, is gonna be the location of the overall controls. The display menu is at the top. I like where it's at. And I also like the operating system. The navigation seems to be more intuitive than what we have on the CR30. The CR30 is just really basic. Now, that doesn't mean that it's gonna be a a, um, I would say less of a printer or a worse printer. It just means that the UI is just uh, not as polished as what I've seen over here with the Saint Smart. Now, if we were to measure the actual printable area for the printer and we were to take out this tape measure right here, you're looking at around eight inches, right? So that's um, what you can see there is around eight inches uh, that you can work with. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at how does this compare to the CR30. Now, as we take a look at the print area for the CR30 and we take out the tape measure, you'll notice that the, the actual belt itself is a little bit longer. So we're looking at around nine inches in length. Uh, but what I've noticed is that I haven't yet been able to take advantage of the entire print surface here. So even though the belt is wider, the actual print area is very similar to what I found in the Saint Smart. Now, the Saint Smart does have a push button uh, type control when it comes to navigating uh, through the actual menu. Uh, but the menu, again, seems to be a little bit more polished on the Saint Smart, and the actual screen itself is much larger. Now, with the Saint Smart, you do insert your micro SD at the very top and the back of that control unit, and with the actual CR30, it's here in the front. Uh, this uses a standard SD, the Saint Smart uses a micro SD. Now, for those of you who are curious about what the roller system would look like um, if it was attached uh, to the Saint Smart, Pretty much this is where it would be placed. Um, we would have the support brackets uh, obviously supporting uh, this point right here. And then as um, your, your prints are coming off, what would end up happening is that those prints would just roll onto this roller. Now this again is for large prints. So if you have very long prints like the swords, you would use something like this. But if you're using or printing small repetitive pieces, like even those face masks that I was showing you, uh, or those Halloween masks, you would not use this. I'm gonna share with you how we've gone through the prints on this printer, uh, but there are different techniques that you can use, especially like if you're gonna print a sword like this, you know, one of the things that we did is we um, sliced it in half, and this is a print that's available on Thingiverse. Uh, we were able to slice it in half, and then what we ran it, and this is all stock settings, right? I didn't go into detail, um, really just out of the box. I, I wanted to see, without any tweaking, what kind of quality you can get from the printer. Now, you can tweak it, you can change the layer height, you can do everything that you'd want, but this is about, uh, for me, getting the printer, unboxing it, heating it up, making sure it's layered, uh, leveled correctly, and then running a print. So that's how we're looking at these prints right now. So what we did is, as you notice here, is that we sliced the, the actual file in half, right? And you could do that in Idea Maker. You could also do that in Prusa Slicer as well. Um, you can't, um, I, I don't know if there's a marketplace add-on that would allow you to actually slice it um, any other way. But this is what uh, we did. We sliced it in half so that we can print it. And we did it because we didn't want to have any kind of supports um, marring the actual service because we wanted to reduce how much sanding we do. Now you could print this completely and then you would have some supports on one side. That also works as well. But let's take a closer look at this so you can see the actual quality. So notice how clean this is right here. Really, really nice quality. And then as the printer is printing, what's happening is this continues to move out like this, right? It just continues to come out. And you can see really, really nice. Uh, everything, everything is just really nice. 
Uh, this is using, by the way, GST3D uh, filament. So it, again, it's not the most expensive filament on the market either, which is something I also wanted to see if it would, um, how it would print and what quality. Uh, so this printed out really nicely. And then what, what we do is we would basically take the two halves and then we'd glue them together and then you'd have your full sword. But the nice thing about it is as, as you look at this, and it's not going to be able to uh, show all on, on camera because it's so long, this is all one piece. So that's what makes this, I would say, stronger because you don't have to worry about connecting pieces and gluing the pieces together and then worrying about sanding. Now this is a second print that I ran, but this time I ran both sides uh, so that you can see you know, what it would look like if it was put together. Now again, I haven't glued it, so you're gonna be able to see some spacing here. And as we go on camera here, you'll be able to see kind of like the spacing uh, that we have going on. So there's some spacing there, but that's just because I haven't really glued it. I just wanted to show you how this worked. So here you can see how it's, it's, it's gap, but if I squeeze it in, you could basically see how that gets nice and tight. And then um, you could either use some filler here or um, you know after you glue it and you press it. Now again, you could have printed, and I could have printed this entire, uh, uh, I would say sword, standing just like this and then had supports on one side. But uh, my fear is that this wouldn't be as clean. And then also, as you look at my edges right here, um, I would just felt that there was gonna be a lot of work to clean that up. So it's your choice if you wanna print with supports or, or not, splice it or not the way I did, but the whole thing about it is that the overall quality of this sword, and as you can see that right there, is pretty spectacular. Now the next part of my test was what would it, or how would it perform if I was printing a lot of repetitive pieces for, let's say, for Halloween or any kind of cosplay. And as you can see here, uh, very popular show, right? And this is a face mask. This is actually the bottom portion of the mask. And what I was doing is I was running on this full production, having this thing kick them out, and literally with uh, little to no support, having this really printed out in succession, piece after piece after piece. And as we take a look at this, you can see how clean this is. So notice how nice, really um, no stringing, and the supports came off really, really well as well. Uh, very functional, this print as well. So uh, ran these, uh, was able to run about uh, 10 of these at a time. So uh, ran you know, all the bottoms and then all the tops and it printed without a problem. Now, the other thing that we also did is we ran another print and we'll go ahead and bring this one in. And we've seen this also on Thingiverse. By the way, again, all these files are Thingiverse files. Uh, when we took a look at this, we went ahead and we ran this. Now this was uh, running a different filament and uh, the print issues that you see here, you see these defects that are here, uh, it's because I did not dry out this filament, right? It has nothing to do with the printer because as you saw these other prints here, uh, these other prints were pretty good, right? They, they had no, no problems. Uh, this for me has to do with the filament. So what we did is we dried it out and then we ran some other prints um, using this filament and it worked fine. Uh, but again, this is the kind of stuff that you can get. And again, you could get continuous prints. So uh, from a print perspective, very happy with it. And it's, uh, it seems to me as I compare it to my other Bell printer that this one seems to print just a little bit faster. So uh, that's how the prints look. Uh, fantastic quality, in my opinion. So make sure you check it out. So guys, that wraps up our review of the Saint Smart 3D Belt Printer. Again, if you want to print stuff like this, or you'd like to print something like this, or a lot of little things, check out this printer. See you in the next video.